Hey everybody, it's Peter, and in this video we're going to do an in-depth review of the Piaggio Typhoon 50cc scooter. And we're filming here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, where if you want to know more about this vehicle, I will be able to bring it back on video again and again and again. So if you are interested in this vehicle, or a Vespa scooter, or another Piaggio scooter, the Liberty, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments the types of things you want to know about these scooters, because I'm able to come back and answer your questions in both the comment section and on on future videos. Now here's the thing that's a little bit tricky right now with the Typhoon. The Typhoon actually has a few things that are not what I think is correct on the website. Uh, there's a spec sheet on there that's a little bit out of date, it has the wrong size tires, and underneath here it says that there's a USB port, but I can't find one. So I think there's a couple updates that need to happen to that website, and what I'm going to do is show you what we've got here, tell you the things I like and don't like about it, tell you the things that I think are similar, but to be fair, like I said, some of the specs I'm not 100% sure on, and then what we'll do is We'll come back to this vehicle again and again with your questions to make sure that I answer both my questions and your questions before I make my next video. So again, we'll, there will be more information on this scooter. It is a popular scooter and it's one that I would probably recommend. It's the entry level in the Piaggio lineup. I quite like a lot of features about it, but like I said, there are things I need to know. And instead of me just going and asking those questions right now, we're gonna get your questions as well and make sure we answer every question we can to build sort of a database of information. So let's get going with a review of this vehicle right now. So let's start by giving just a general overview of what we've got here. To start, let's just hop on here. First of all, I'm about six feet tall. Of course, on a scooter, you can be much shorter than me and be comfortable. Right now, it's on the center stand, which of course lifts the rear wheel off the ground, gives it a higher seat height, but it does make it easier for me to sit on it with both feet up in the video here. A couple nice things you've got here. Unlike the Vespa scooter, which is one of my favorite scooters, the Vespa is a little bit more expensive. And like I said, this is a lower uh, price point than the Vespa. But unlike the Vespa, you have a fully flat floor. Floor. So that's just like the Liberty here, gives you a little bit more space to walk around. Now the Liberty and the Vespa will have a storage compartment in here. This one does not appear to have one. It has a little panel here, but I think I played with that a few times. I'm pretty sure that's just fuses and other things, uh, probably mechanicals, that kind of thing. So there's no storage compartment here, and that allows you to put a headlight in here, or it allows them to put a headlight in there instead of up here. So we'll talk about the overall styling, but you can see here at six feet tall, very, very comfortable. This seat does a appear to me to be just a little bit squishier than the other two seats. They seem to be a little bit firmer. As far as the passenger accommodation, this is always a little tricky when you jump back. You've got your foot pegs there. They say they are extractable, I believe, on the website. Um, I don't know what extractable means. I think it means fold out. These are not fold out uh, um, pegs right now. So they are just mounted there. On the Vespa, the bodywork kind of gets in a little bit of the way, so your heels are just touching the bodywork. On the Piaggio, it has the fold-out foot pegs, um, on the uh, Liberty, excuse me. On this one here, it's kind of an in-between. They're not fold-out, the bodywork isn't there, but there is some bodywork that touches your legs here. Either way, your passenger is going to be perfectly fine for what you're doing. It's a 50cc scooter, so in North America, you're usually not taking a passenger very far. Other parts of the world, obviously, they can load all kinds of people on here um, and they go everywhere. But in North American roads with North American speeds and laws, probably you're taking the second passenger just very briefly around town, which I think this works fine for. And then, of course, as a driver, you've got a lot of comfort here. I will say that the mirrors are very good. They clear my shoulders here, just a tiny bit of my elbow in there, but that's probably more adjustment of the mirror. Yeah, actually, they clear very well. So nice, uh, good mirror position. We're going to talk about the dash here, but let's start with the front wheel because the front wheel is where you get something different on this scooter. And even though this is the entry level price, it may be something that you're looking for that you don't get in higher price scooters. So let's start with that and we'll work our way back. So taking a look at the front wheel here of the Typhoon, you've got a lot of things going on here. So let's just start with the brakes. You've got kind of a cool gold coloring here, two piston caliper on a disc brake. Some of the discs on the other models will have drilled rotors. In other words, there's circular drilled holes through them for ventilation. This one has the same idea with sort of an oval shaped um, ventilation. The reality is for a 50cc scooter, you don't need a ton of ventilation like you would on um, you know, a high performance sport bike or something like that. So this serves a purpose. And a lot of this is just about style. And frankly, from a style perspective, they do a good job. Unlike the Vespa, this is more like the regular Piaggio where you have the two fork tubes, one on each side. Vespa has everything all on this side, but this is your typical suspension mount. So again, pretty simple, pretty standard stuff, nothing kind of crazy in here. What I do like though, is you have these 120 by 70 by 14 wheels. So let's translate that for you. 120 is the width of the uh, tire, the width of that tread. 
70 is a uh, percentage of the sidewall that we'll leave that for later, but 14 is the big number here. So a Vespa has a 12 inch rim and the Piaggio on the front tire is a 16 inch rim. This one is 14, so bigger than the Vespa. And the difference between the Vespa and the Piaggio, uh, the Piaggio Liberty, excuse me, is that the Vespa has a little bit wider tires, the Piaggio Liberty has a little bit narrower tires. This one is both larger diameter than the Vespa and wider than the Vespa. So although it's a little bit down in diameter from the 16 inch front wheel, you have a 14 inch wheel here. And the Vespa, or sorry, the Piaggio Liberty has a 14 inch rear wheel, so does this, and it's also a fairly wide wheel. So you end up with this motorcycle width type tire. A lot of sport bikes are a 120 millimeter width. So very standard motorcycle tire type thing. I mean, smaller in diameter, but standard width, which allows you, in my mind, a little bit more rubber on the road. Uh, gives you kind of that nice curvature to it there for the angle. And you've got a little bit deeper tread to me, to my eyes, compared to some of the other ones. So you've got a nice little tire here, uh, sort of appropriately sized. If you um, think the Vespa wheels are too small, this is larger, and that just gives you a little bit of an option there. Let's work our way to the back now. So here's the area where I'm a little bit unsure about componentry and how they mix with the Liberty. Like I said, the specs that I have are not fully up to date. So what's interesting is this panel here, you could have it as a shared piece on the Piaggio and on the Vespa. It actually says Piaggio down here on both of those models. This one has the same panel here without the nameplate here. Uh, both the other models have a little uh, black plastic plug there. This is a little bit like greasy there, there we go. They have a black plastic plug there. Um, but this one has the actual Kickstarter. So what you do is you pull this out and you can kickstart it. Of course, it doesn't need to be kickstarted. It has an electric start. You can hit the button. It also has on the other models, a 4T down here with a little uh, air cooling area down there. This, it looks a little different on both of them, but there are absolutely some shared components here, at least to my eyes, between the Vespa and the Liberty. And the reason I point that out is because these are, this is the less expensive version. So you're not, full clean slate here. You are absolutely sharing some components between the higher priced models and you're getting them here at a lower price. You've got a single shock here down there and it is a um, adjustable for preloads. So you can spin this around and if you have a lot of weight on there, you can kind of restore that uh, uh, ride height and that kind of thing. So good stuff through here. And again, for an entry level scooter, you're not looking for crazy high end stuff. You're looking for basic transportation and this does that very, very well. I do want to show you the front wheel here from the opposite side of the brake. Again, the rear wheel has the uh, transmission on the one side, the, ga the exhaust on the other side, or the muffler at least on the other side. This one's a little more open and you can really see that automotive style wheel. Now hopefully I can move this camera around here and kind of get the angles here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you can sort of see that there. It's a little bit harder to show. But when you look at it from this angle here, excuse me, I'm trying to work with my tripod. Uh, you can see that there's just kind of some angles in here. So a really high-end looking wheel. It's got some style to it. It does not film well, but it does look pretty cool in person. A lot of people were say, sort of saying this to them looks like the sportier version of some of these scooters compared to others. And yeah, you could certainly make that case with the style here. So taking a look at the seat here, you can see you've got some texture in here, some detail in there. No real stitching, at least not stitching for style like you would have on the Vespa and frankly some of the uh, Piaggio Liberties as well. Uh, but again, very good seat and like I said, a little bit of a cush to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw the key in here. I'm just going to work my way around the tripod here. So if I look like I'm a little uncomfortable, that's why. We're going to zip that open. We've got owner's manual in here. Now again, the current website lists that there is a USB port in here. Uh, I don't see that. I've spent a lot of time with scooters and I feel like I should be able to find this on my own and I haven't been able to find it. So I just want to be clear that um, the uh, side that you can't see on this side here looks identical to that side here. They claim you could fit a full face helmet in here and that wouldn't surprise me. You can see that it does have that shape where you can put the helmet down. It is nicely carved out in the top here. So um, while every full face helmet may not fit in here, I wouldn't be surprised at all if um, you could fit a uh, full face helmet. It does look like it's a very good size over here. One thing you can see, maybe just, actually you can't see, let's go a little spin a little this way. Just off camera here, there is your gasoline fill there. So of course that is locked underneath your seat. Now one thing I do like on the Liberty and on the Vespa scooter is there's little tabs down here where if you wanted to leave your gear in here, you could put the D-ring on a tab here and fold the seat. That's something that's not available here. So if you want to lock up your helmet, uh, the only place to lock it would be inside here, not hanging off the side of this one. Uh, of course, there are ways to 
you know, handle some of that stuff. But just so you know, there are a couple little minor, minor little details that are different here that, um, you know, might justify just a slightly lower price. When it comes to taking cargo on a scooter, of course, you have lots of options. Scooters, especially in the Piaggio and Vespa lineup, they do have a clip like this. Now, this is the better clip, in my opinion, on the uh, Liberty they have this. The Vespa, they have a different style. This one, you can see, you can slide a bag in there and it clips together. So whatever bag you have, whether it's a backpack, a grocery bag, whatever else it is, uh, you can clip the handle through there. You can put it between your feet. And of course, because it's a flat floor there, it's going to sit securely between your feet as you're riding. And of course, the top end nicely locked in here when you're not using that, just clip in there. So again, typical scooter stuff. One thing you don't have here is the um, both the Vespa and the Liberty do have an opening compartment here. This one doesn't. But again, this is basic transportation. You can take a backpack, you can take things with you and make it work. And I quite like the way this uh, scooter lays out. So let's just take a look at one thing that is going to show you this is a little bit less expensive than the Liberty or the Vespa. So here it is. This is the gauge cluster that you're going to be looking at. And this is really the symbol that you bought the less expensive model. The more modern Liberty and Vespa do have nicer gauges. We'll show you a picture of them, at least one of them right now. They're very similar on both the Vespa and the Liberty. However, here you have the old traditional dial style odometer, which again is not something you see on many vehicles anymore. Uh, the needles again, a little bit dated. So you've got a nice fuel gauge here. Uh, clear and easy to read, absolutely. You've got lights in there for your high beam, for your uh, low beam and your signal lights in there. But this is a thing you're going to look at all the time. Now to me, if you're looking for an inexpensive scooter, you're buying a lot of quality in this Piaggio branded Typhoon. Um, rather than some, you know, cheaper, cheaper brand. But like I said, you are always looking at these gauges. I'd like to see them update this, but again, I understand why they don't. They're hitting a price point with this. And again, you're, you're sharing components here with a higher trim vehicle. This is just the one thing that is not to me up to current uh, modern day scooter standards, but again, fully functional. You've got your speedometer, that's really all you need. You've got a fuel gauge, which is great, odometer. So there's no trip odometer, that kind of thing on this, where you would get that on the higher trim ones with more of a digital uh, odometer display and again, analog gauges. So take a look at that. Let's look at some more shared components with this and the, uh, at least the Piaggio. So when we compare this to the Liberty, you've actually got identical buttons for your, high for your headlights here. Again, you can flash to pass by pressing that down. And then of course, lock it in uh, high beams like I just did up there and regular low beams like that. And then of course your signal lights as well. You've got your signal light left, cancel, signal light right, cancel like that, simple, simple stuff. The only bit difference in um, this and the Liberty is the horn button. Horn button here is a little different style and you'll see the same thing over on the other side when we talk about our kill switch and our start button. Right side, throttle side, your grips are the same as the Liberty. Your brakes feel very similar or the same to me. And then you've got an identical kill switch here. Again, the styling here of the start button. And again, this is an electric start, even though it has a kickstart uh, uh, handle down there. This is electric start. This button is the only real difference uh, for controls, this button and the horn button from the more, uh, you know, sort of up, up the line Liberty. So let's take an overall view of this bike again. So if you're looking at a scooter like this, let's just talk about overall some of the differences. We talked about the seat here. You have a little bit higher end seat here and a little bit higher end seat here on the Vespa and the Piaggio Liberty. Now this one is a special edition model of the, uh, oh, I'm gonna say it wrong, BAC Ibachi uh, chocolate, I think. Uh, Oh, well, I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure, but it's the special edition one here. But you can see there are some style options within the Liberty lineup, and certainly Vespa is known for its style as well. The Vespa does have an LED headlight. Both of these are gonna be just halogen lights. So again, you're paying more, you're getting a few different things. The Vespa style, the frame here, is actually part of the body. So what you see here, the body is part of the frame, I should say, where the Typhoon and the Liberty are built a little bit more like a modern sport bike. They have a frame and they have plastic fairing on the outside to give it that shape and give it that style. You've got the classic chrome everywhere kind of styling on a Vespa. You've got a lot of gloss black over here. Here you have some gloss black, but you have some differences here. While you've got a rear rack here of sorts and a little handle grab there, you still have the handle grab here, but no rear rack. So you've got some modern styling here. I really like the look of these fat, fairly large wheels, but you can see here, that's a 16 inch wheel that's narrower, that's a 12 inch wheel that's you know in between for width, and this is the largest front tire. This Liberty has a 14 inch rear wheel tire, which is similar in diameter to, or same in diameter as this one, but I think they are slightly different. Yes, this is only a 100, so again, wider tire again on the um, 
Typhoon here as well. And then the Vespa has 12 inches front and rear, and I believe they're actually identical size. Didn't check that exactly. So a 50cc scooter performance is going to be similar. There's not massive differences in power, but there may be some differences. We're gonna to have to look into that. Like I said, the spec sheet I have on this one isn't perfect. A couple things I like from the seating position here, seating position on all three of them, very comfortable. Both of those ones have round mirrors. This one has a little bit more similar style to something like the Kawasaki Ninja style. A little bit more elongated mirrors here. Uh, yeah, objects and mirror closer than they appear on both sides here. So again, slightly wide angle mirrors here, slightly wide angle mirrors on both of those. But again, those ones are round, this one's regular. So there are differences in style and there are differences in some pricing things. There are reasons to move up to these two, but again, if you're just looking for a basic scooter, the Typhoon has a lot to offer. These do not last. In a place like New Brunswick here, you can drive this at 14 years old after taking a written test. If you have a car license, you can also drive this uh, if you're 16 years and older. As long as you have a car license, you can drive this uh, without a motorcycle license here. And that makes that cheap transportation option a really good option, and that's what this is. Now, there's not a whole lot more to move up from there, but again, this is my first time seeing the Typhoon and I think it's pretty impressive. I'd like to see the dash update a little bit. Uh, the website mentions a USB port, and I think that's a good thing to have on a scooter as well. I'm not sure that it is on this unit because I can't find it. So again, what I'm looking for from you is what do you want to know about this? I've got to reach out to Piaggio because there are some questions I have about the information on their website currently as I'm filming this in early 2023. But if you have questions, let's get your questions in as well so we can come back on this uh, in the future and make an even more in-depth video, cover all the questions that you have, all the questions that I have, and we can talk more about this in the future. So let me know what kind of questions you have on the Typhoon and uh, I'll make sure I come back. And of course, if you wanna see these bikes, uh, come on down to Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports, where pretty much every Vespa, pretty much every Liberty or a Piaggio, all the trim lines are in stock. And of course, the new Typhoon 2023 model has just showed up for the first time. This is my first look at it. We'll have more. Thanks everybody for watching.